Good afternoon. Between two presidents. Okay. Welcome to Delaware Tech, George Campus. We have, uh, needless to say, we have the entire President's Council here this morning, as w this afternoon, as well as members of the uh, student uh, body here. And uh, we also have some SEED scholarship recipients who will join us in about a half hour. Um, when we realized that it was the 10th anniversary of the SEED scholarship program, uh, AACC, the American Association of Community Colleges, obviously expressed uh, interest in this. And uh, obviously, Senator McDowell, with his longstanding uh, interest and in work on this, Governor Minner uh, making it a priority, and then obviously Governor Markell making higher education uh, in general a priority and fully funding this program, we felt that it would uh, make it easier on all of you to talk to the three principals involved in this. Uh, starting on the left, Senator McDowell has been in the, the State Senate for a number of years. He's a veteran who is focused on uh, education and access to college as a priority, but also things like renewable energy and, and is now uh, co-chair of the Budget Writing Committee uh, for the State Senate. Uh, governor Minner was in public office for 34 years as a member of the House, the Senate, Lieutenant Governor, then Governor, and during her inaugural speech for her second term, uh, used a, a biblical verse about the importance of planting seeds now that would uh, reap the benefit for all of us later on. And out of that came a program that was a priority in the General Assembly, specifically Senator McDowell, Student Excellence Equal Degrees, the SEED Scholarship Program. And uh, obviously, Governor Markell has made education a priority during his administration. Uh, Secretary Duncan was here a week ago because, in his mind, Delaware is doing everything right under the leadership of this governor. And uh, Governor Markell has fully funded SEED every single year of his administration. Uh, which is a huge, <laughs> considering the Financial Times, that's a huge investment. So he's got a lot to say about this as well. So uh, for about a half hour, you've got an opportunity to talk uh, to the three principals here, and then we will have some SEED scholars join us, and you can talk to them as well. Um, well, thanks for the opportunity uh, to, to talk to you about the program. Um, as obviously, there's a lot of interest in community colleges coming from a national level, and uh, I think they're getting uh, the national government is getting a lot of their lead from what's going on in different states, and so this is kind of uh, an opportunity to talk to some uh, officials who who've been doing it for a while and can can perhaps talk about the experience, what was the impetus for the program, and maybe perhaps that's a, a good place to start. Well, I guess it, for that, you're looking at me, and uh, I don't know whether I have to hit that to make it on, but um, I, I can tell you, brief, briefly, it started with two, two major things. Um, there was an article that I read somewhere in a, some New York publication about a wealthy New Yorker who went to a poor school in, in New York, Brooklyn, and he, he went to the students and he said, if you guys get through high school, don't drop out and pass. And it was an area where there were high levels of dropouts. It was a very poorly functioning school, actually. But he said, if you work at it and get decent grades and pass, I'll pay you to go to college for one whole class. Uh, I, I can't remember how many people it was. And I'm, I'm sorry to say I can't remember his name. Eugene Lang. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Governor. As usual, he bails me out. <laughs> but uh, um, so... I was inspired by that, and then just right after that, I read a, a study that said that over, way over half of the students in uh, low-income families are told by a parent or guardian, don't think about going to college because we can't afford it. And I got thinking about the negativity of that. I got thinking about a kid that's got to decide in the eighth grade to take a tougher algebra cor uh, math course than the kids are not going to college and what that means. And so I said, we've got to take that negativity away. So I structured a, a bill. I looked at, uh, I think Georgia had a HOPE scholarship program. We borrowed from, as we often do as legislators, we borrow from other places. And see. So I structured a bill and put it together. And 
um, I had huge, huge difficulty. I'll sort of shorten the time term, but it was a 10-year period, five general assemblies, uh, which are two years each. The first three, I got the bill passed in the Senate with only one dissenting vote, and I could never get the House of Representatives to bring it up. Uh, and I was hung on the yin-yang between uh, the cost of the program and the fact that I didn't put a restriction on income. I didn't make it income eligibility. I said, if you're eligible to go to school, you ought to be able to take advantage of this program. And uh, so a lot, of, a lot of people in the House didn't like that, uh, et cetera. So I had to either, and then they wanted to increase the uh, qualifications to a 3-2 in high school. I said, no, if you're eligible to go to the University of Delaware with a 2.5, why should you have to get a 3-2? Anyway, back and forth, back and forth. The, f the fourth year, I sort of gave up. I didn't even put the bill in. And in the fifth year, Governor Minner sent her uh, then chief of staff, who's sitting at the end of the table, Mark Brainerd, to see me and said, um, he said to me, he said, Governor Minner thinks uh, she can get your bill done. Just, we didn't call it, see, I called it Hope Scholarship at that point. Uh, she, the unlined, she unwound her vision for the whole seed idea and everything and a two-year program at Dell Tech. And I said, done deal. <laughs> That's it. She got behind it. Uh, we got it passed in the Senate again, and we got it passed in the House. I think only one dissenting vote in both houses. And, of course, Governor Minner signed it into law. It's, you know, the rest is history, and it's been a very successful program. It was really quite simple because Harris had kind of laid the groundwork with some of the things, but I had a different uh, story to tell myself because I only went through the 10th grade. And at that point, my father always thought that girls didn't need that much education. After all, they were just going to get married. And so my three sisters and I all sort of left school after the 10th grade. He left us in there long enough to get our driver's license, and you got that in the 10th grade. You still do. But anyway, the idea of saying that I knew what it was not to get your high school diploma. And guess what was opening the first year? Dell Tech and Community College. And I went there, and the two advisors that they gave me, both of them said, you should not take the other courses to get the 11th and 12th grade. You should take this program that's called GED, and it gives you the general equivalency of a high school diploma, and you can go to college and everything. And I said, well, that sounds nice, but uh, where do I have to take it? Well, you have to go to the University of Delaware, which was like 60 miles from me. You know, and back in the 60s, the late 60s, that was a long ways to go. So anyway, I went and they told me that the number of courses that it was, and they said, it'll probably take you two days to get through it. And I said, oh, really? And they said, yes. And I said, well, I can't do it then because I have three children and I don't have a babysitter for two days. That would just be impossible for me to afford, so I can't do it. So they said, well, if you want to take it all one day, we'll get you set up so you can take it all one day, and then we'll see what you fail, and that's the only thing that you have to take over again. Now, needless to say, Mark would probably tell you I never heard the word fail before, not in my vocabulary at all. And so I decided I would go take them all, and the lowest grade I got was a 76, and that was in math. And I had told them if I failed anything, it was math because I never liked math, and I ever, never did well in it because I didn't like it. But, you know, when we started talking about it, I never even thought anything about seed. Mark and, and the person who was my budget director, J.J. Davis, sort of came up with the seed idea because of my having talked about it and saying, you know, you plant the seeds and you don't see the results right away. You have to wait till they come up and then harvest them. And I said, you know, it takes time. And throughout my speech that I was giving that day, I talked about planting seeds and when you can harvest it. And so they gave it the name seed, which I thought was wonderful because I used that quite often in my speeches, and so I was quite happy to have it done that way. But when I went, sent Mark down to talk to Harris to see 
if he wouldn't mind if I put it in as the governor's request rather than them starting it in either the House or the Senate because it was sort of at that time of sort of a lady in the Senate who had been serving and the guy over in the Senate, uh, the Senate, the guy in the Senate and the lady in the House. And they sort of, one wouldn't give in to the other one. And so I figured if I made it my bill, that would take that argument away. And I told them I wanted it to be the simplest bill you could ever get. You've got to remember, we're talking about people who are not the brightest in this classroom, and they may need to know they do it, and that's it. And so we set the ground level very low. Uh, most places and most of the people that have gone out and talked in other states have said, well, you set your requirements too low, but we really didn't because I was looking for the group of people and I knew where they were going to be because they didn't have time to really study in school because they had another job and they had to go to work before they would go to school. Anyway, we uh, worked through it and as Harris said, it very quickly caught on. However, I had problems because University of Delaware said, you're leaving us out of it. And I said, well, you don't really need to be in it. I'm not talking about the kind of students you want. You want the smart guys. We'll give you those. We're taking the ones who have a struggle to pass. And that's what I wanted. I wanted them to have the opportunity. And I found that as I talked to them, and the whole year that we started that, that, that whole year, I went and talked to eighth graders. And I started telling them, you're the ones that have to have the idea, you're going to go to college. Just tell yourself, I can go to college because I'm going to give you the way. And we set the, the goals and, of course, keeping them out of trouble. The principals and superintendents like that very much because knowing they had to stay out of trouble was very good for a lot of those children that we were talking about. And they did stay out of trouble because when they found out they could get a scholarship just like the other kids could, then they were very anxious to do it. So we worked on that for a while and it... Uh, it covers a lot of ground for a lot of people. And I, I noticed especially, and I'm sure Mark would tell you that he's noticed too, we have a lot of minorities and we have a high number of Hispanics in the state and they couldn't get any college at all any way they tried hardly because they had been moved around so much because they came here from Texas, most of them. And they had been in their own home country, but then they had been traveling around the orchards picking fruit or the vegetables in the crops in the fields and working those. And so they didn't get to stay in one school district all the time. And it made it tough for them. But every high school graduate should have the right to go to college. And I don't think it matters whether their parents make 50000 a year or 25000 or 10000 a lot of them, it wouldn't matter how much they made. They're not going to help that child to get through college because they didn't go to college and they don't think their children need to. But anyway, we set it so that everybody could get that college degree if they wanted it. And so we worked very hard. And it uh, turned out all right because the eighth graders realized that they could go to... Shut it off, okay? <laughs> I remember the last time I was speaking when that happened. It's, it's embarrassing, I'll tell you. Um, I'll find out who it was and whether it's anything I need to take care of or not. Back at the NGA meetings. <laughs> Back at the, the DGA, yeah, and, and NGA both. Um, we had uh, a lot of meetings where we had a lot of people who forgot to turn their phones off before they came in. But I have to give Dell Tech all of the credit. You know, we can pass a bill, but if they had not have put it into effect and followed it and did very well by those students. They made sure those students got the help if they needed it. Remedial help or just a talk from a counselor, whatever it was, they made sure they got it. And they set the program up so that they could pass. They really could. And it was good. The start was good. I remember I asked then President George, um, did you get any seed scholarships this time? He said, get any. He said, two-thirds of our class. And a lot of the courses are seed <coughs> scholarships. And then I had a couple of granddaughters who worked the colleges, and one of them was, at that time, teaching. 
And she said, yeah, a lot of my kids are seed scholars. She said, we hear it all the time. She said, they, they all love it. And so the thing was, so did the parents. And although we thought it would probably just be the low income, the students who couldn't do so well, the parents of the students who do extremely well said, that's two years free college. And then you can transfer to another school and we only have to pay two years. We can save up enough in the first two years to pay your third year at least, you know, and maybe even more than that. And so a lot of them are doing that. At first, we only had a couple of schools that would uh, take our students with all of their credits. And now, I'm going to look at Mark, is it 60? Uh, actually, more than Governor, that? it's 188. Yeah, there's 188, 188 agreements, 188 agreements. Right, right. I was way off at 60. That shows you how long I've been out of office. Uh, so. <laughs> well, when I got done, it was 60 colleges that were accepting our students with all of their credits. And that made it good. I can't turn it off. To me. Somebody really wants to talk to you. Uh, push it off. Key. Just hold your finger on it. Okay. Got it. <laughs> it's funny how we get these toys. And it's funny how you revert to your old ways, isn't it? You tell me what to do all over again. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it was, it's good to see. I, I'm, the first year I met a lot of students who would say to me, I got your seed scholarship. I got your seed scholarship. Well, we had another scholarship that was just as important, and it was for those people who were single parents, and regardless of what happened that they became single parents. I had one guy that got the scholarship one year, and he had four, four kids, and he was flipping burgers. And I don't know if he's still with the college or not, but after he got done his course and he took um, computer sciences, and after he got done, the college had hired him for a while. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's still with them or not. I hope he is because that's where he got his start, and I'm sure he appreciated it as much as I did. Well, I'm going to let somebody else talk for a while, but let me tell you something. I go out. I don't go out as often as I used to because of my disabilities, but I go out, and every time I go out, I will run into somebody who will say, I'm one of your seed, and they're quite proud of it, to tell you the truth. And I think that's the most important thing. They're just as proud as their scholarship as someone who got it being a star student. So it makes a big difference. Governor, did you wanna, uh, you wanna add anything about the, why you made it a priority? And Matt, did you wanna hear from Governor Markell about the? Okay. Um, <laughs> I was particularly interested in the, for example, the, the Tennessee Promise uh, program has received a lot of attention, um, and I, I, my perception is that uh, state funding for higher education has been kind of dropping across the board. What is this kind of with, when the president says this? What, what kind of what's, what's the signal for um, for governors around the country in terms of making the uh, higher education a priority, and, and how do you feel you're already kind of ahead of that curve? Well, uh, let me start by thanking Governor Minner and Senator McDowell for having the vision in the first place. Uh, you know, one of my favorite lines is that uh, from Thomas Edison, vision without the ability to execute is just an hallucination. <laughs> and I think in this case, Governor Minner and Senator McDowell had the vision, and they had the very good fortune of turning that vision over to a really talented team at Delaware Tech uh, to make it happen. So I want to thank Mark. I want to thank Lonnie George before Mark. And, and you know, most importantly, Mark would be the first to give credit to the men and women who are here uh, from all the campuses for, for making this happen. You know, comparing to Tennessee, uh, you know, I think Delaware sometimes we just do our work. And I think, in the, I think we were, you know, we were doing that promise thing before Tennessee started. They, you know, they maybe got the, uh, the headlines, but I mean, you know, as you just heard, uh, Governor Minner and, and Senator McDowell started this a long time ago. And, you know, for me, I, I mean, I think the president's proposal makes a lot of sense, but, let, you know, not just because he says so, more so because I get to meet the amazing students who take advantage of this opportunity. And you're going to hear from some of them in a moment. And I am Anytime I need uh, my uh, dose of inspiration, uh, Delaware Tech is one of the first places I will go. Because whether it's the students who come here uh, straight out of school, uh, in large part thanks to the Seed Scholarship, and I, and I think that the point that Governor Minner 
made a moment ago is, is so correct. Uh, you, you find a lot of students, a lot of really capable students coming out of high school who say, this is too good a deal for me to pass up. I'm going to go for two years. I'm going to get my two years under my belt, and then I'm going to be in a position to start as a junior, basically, you know, financially starting from scratch, which is an amazing place to be. And now with over 180 articulation agreements, uh, they can go into all of these various fields. So it's attracted, uh, what, what really impresses me is it, it's attracted a pretty broad, broad array of students. Some of them, you know, really talented and, you know, at the top of their class and want to take advantage of this great opportunity. Some of them may have had more struggles because they did, in fact, have to work other jobs or take care of younger siblings and the like, and, and this was a great opportunity uh, for them. But I think what people really have to focus on is the incredibly important linkage between great community colleges like Delaware Tech and the economic development needs of our business community. And that's where Delaware Tech excels. And I am just always so impressed with the team here for A, their agility, their you know, ability to be nimble and respond really, really quickly when they run into an employer who's got a particular need for people with a particular skill set. And then Delaware Tech's ability to turn that conversation into a program quickly. And so that people, whether it's uh, young people coming out of high schools or whether it's people who maybe are a little bit mat more mature and who are uh, underemployed or sometimes unemployed, can come in and what our, our job is to meet them halfway. You know, we, I tell students all the time, you know, there's only so much your teachers can do for you. There's only so much your administrators to, can do. There's only so much your counselors can do. In the end, you take contr control of your own destiny by investing of yourselves. But if you're willing to invest of yourselves and put the time in, then it's our job to meet you halfway. And to do that effectively, we need to bring together the employers, uh, the, the faculty uh, at Delaware Tech and our other institutions of higher education. Sometimes there's a role for government to play, as Senator McDowell knows from the, from the Joint Finance Committee. And we just have to figure it out. And we have to, our job is to figure it out better than any other state. And our job is to learn from the best around the world and, 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 and to try to be the best in the world. And when we do that, uh, we're going to be successful. But it is very difficult for me to imagine how our state thrives if Delaware Tech doesn't thrive. And I think one of the interesting things, we're, you know, we're here to talk about Delaware Tech, but last night I was speaking, I went to a basketball game down at Delaware State University. And Delaware State picked up on the Seed Scholarship with something sort of similar on their own called the Inspire Scholarship. And the president of Delaware State last night was telling me that something like 500 of their students are there because of the Inspire Scholarship. Mm -hmm. So something that you all started, you know, years ago is having this, I think, really disproportionate impact on giving people throughout our state the ability to, you know, improve their skills, uh, connect those skills with uh, the needs of the of the, the work the the workplace, and then actually get a job and support their families. And that's what, the, for me, that's what this is all about. I wonder if I could add a little bit to that flexibility part because I think it's important. It, uh, one of the things, and I didn't, I didn't anticipate this, but one of the great things about the program being here at Dell Tech, Dell Tech is able to be flexible with the kids. Uh, obviously, since we didn't set the bar really high uh, for the entry level, you get some kids who really aren't cut out for a baccalaureate degree. But there are programs here at Dell Tech that they are cut out for. And they're very good at watching these kids if they start to struggle in what is originally going to be a baccalaureate uh, effort. They can divert them without failure. That's the key point. Uh, if we send our kids to college, I don't care where, I send a kid off to Boston University, uh, let's say. Um, I mean, I didn't send any there, but uh, could. And, and the next thing you know, they're coming home and they have failed, uh, at, which is not a good thing for a kid to have to go through. When they're here, they're diverted and picked up with another program that's more suited to their needs and, and abilities, and so they don't have to go through that failure mode. Um, I don't know the statistics on how many uh, benefit in that way, but I know it's quite a few. Uh, Matt, to the senator's point, what what uh, 
we've shared with the governor and the members of the General Assembly is that we know through our data uh, folks that SEED students tend to be more successful than their classmates in the same cohort. So uh, while we track graduation and success rates, uh, SEED students tend to be more successful. And even when their benefits expire, uh, which under the legislation is three years, they come back and they persist. So um, I believe Governor Markell talked about families getting involved in the decision to become SEED scholars. I think that might be an indication uh, that, that's, that that's true. They, they tend to be more successful. We can give you the data on that and show you exactly how they compare to others in the cohort. But I do think it's important for you to understand that SEED appeals to a really wide array, and there are plenty of SEED participants who, in fact, do want to go on for their four-year degree, but say, this is too good a deal for me to pass up. I can, I'm can. i going to be able to take my, after two yeah. years, go to a, um, a four-year university and start paying at that point. I mean, that's, that's unbelievable. It's a, it's a really amazing deal. And so you have that, and then you have, uh, you know, you have a lot of other students uh, as well. But I think Delaware Tech does a phenomenal job of appealing to everybody. Um, what have been some of the challenges with the program um, in terms of either administrative challenges or financial challenges? I guess from having talked to the former president and, of course, to Mark, um, they were afraid they weren't going to have enough classrooms. And that construction really cost. We're fortunate in that we have this Wilmington campus. We also have in Newcastle County a Stanton campus. We have a Terry campus, which is in Kent County. And then, of course, the, the campus, in, the Owen campus, which is in Sussex County. So the children don't have a long distance to drive. They can go right in their own county. And they don't have to. If they want to go to another college, they can. But they can stay right at home. And if they do have part-time jobs, they can usually do them and still get their time in at Dell Tech. Uh, we started them right straight from high school. I didn't want them to quit learning. It is tough when you're 32 years old to go back and start studying. I can promise you that. I did it. I know what it is, and it's tough. It's also tough if you've got to worry about where you're going to get the dollars. You know, I had three children. My first husband passed away. And I went back to college, and you're sitting there saying, oh, gosh, I've spent this money, and here I am taking this out of the, my children's benefits. And so I always made sure that they got what they needed first. And then sometimes I couldn't take a full course. I had to maybe only take two different instead because I didn't want to let them lose anything. I kept them in sports and all the other things. And that's the good part for mothers or fathers who are raising children on their own, they can keep those kids in the school and do other things as well. So it makes a difference. But having the schools close to home is good because the parents see. And you would be surprised. We started Dell Tech in Sussex County, and everybody said it's going to make a difference in Sussex County. It made a difference mm -hmm. in Sussex County, but so has it Kent and Newcastle and Wilmington. I mean, mm -hmm. it has made a difference in our entire state and the benefits to our citizens, whether it's the young people or their parents, because their parents can go back and pick up some courses if they want to. They don't have to take a full work course like the students do, but they can take anything, whether it's for fun with basket weaving or if it's something serious they want to do to help their job by way of computer sciences or uh, some of the guys want to pick up another uh, course with uh, automotive or anything and they can do it because Dell Tech makes sure they put that course together. I have been shocked at how quickly when some of the businesses say I need this kind of an employee and Dell Tech within a week to 10 days will have that coursework set up and go back to them and say is this what you want or do you want something different. They don't make them take what they've got. They give them the option of helping them to, to set up those courses so that they work, so that the benefit is to the employer when he gets a student from Dell Tech. Matt, the governor uh, point accurately points out that one of the criticisms or one of the reasons to oppose the bill early on was that it would overwhelm the college. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, when the legislation was drafted, mm -hmm. Uh, it, it requires all seed applicants to apply for all available financial aid first. Uh, 
Um, and the, the other issue is that, uh, and this is to Senator McDowell's point, how many students were motivated by SEED and got good grades, stayed out of trouble, and by the time they graduated might have a attended a different college. So th there's something that you really can't quantify, and that's all those kids that heard the message that Harris was talking about earlier. Work hard, get good grades, stay out of trouble, go to college. And then by the time they successfully navigate high school, maybe they came as a seed applicant, but maybe they went somewhere else. That, that's a success story there that you'll never be able to quantify under the typical data gathering. And, and I would just quickly add, if there is one thing I believe that we uh, could put more effort into, and that is getting the word out uh, that, that this program is available and what it means. I think uh, it's very important to try to reach the kids and the parents at the middle school level when they are making decisions, some of them making decisions not to prepare for college. And uh, we, we're trying, we added a little bit of money to last year's budget to get the word out a, bit, a little bit more strongly and um, hopefully it, it's going to help. Uh, but that's one thing that could be, we could do better. Um, are there any uh, questions about the program now? We're talking a little bit about uh, fiscal um, uh, con constraints at states. And um, is anybody kind of willing to challenge this program? When you, when you put your budget forward and, and there's money in, in your budget for it, do you have any opposition now from people saying, well, do we want to continue this? Or has it been such a success that it's people kind of... I don't get much pushback. I mean, I think there are plenty of people who would like us to be spending money on other things as well. And there are lots of things that I would like also to be spending uh, money on. It's been a, a challenging time. But I, I think people understand as Governor Minner, you know, expressed in that inaugural speech, I mean, you, there are certain things that you have to do now in order to reap uh, the rewards later. And investing in human capital is really high on that list. And I think when you meet the, you know, the young people you're about to hear about or any of the others that they uh, represent, uh, it's a pretty easy argument for us to make that investing in them and in their future is the right thing to do uh, for the state. The biggest question I get and, and have from the very beginning is one of transportation. And that always is a problem, especially when you've got to go, you know, 30 or 35 miles to get where you need to be. Del Tech did another thing, and I hope Mark knows they did this in the very beginning. They said, well, let us see which students we have that might be close to you. Maybe we could get you a ride with another student if they're coming the same time you are. It might put you out a little bit and you have to go early, you have to stay a little bit later, but wouldn't it be worth it to get the transportation? And the answer, of course, is yes. And normally, those people, either the student themselves or the parents of the student, will offer some gas money. And that's a help to both students. So uh, if you set that up. I'm sorry, Governor. No, that's okay. If you get that set up, it's kind of difficult to do, but you know, it's one of those stories now, a push a button on your computer and you can find out where everybody lives. And, and Senator will we'll be happy to know that we had commuter services on site here to offer the, those types of uh, ride sharing. Yeah, and I want to give a real quick answer to you to that question too, because if you there are 21 Senate districts, and if you look at the number, that's almost 200 families in every Senate district that are out there now, and um, I think you can imagine how that spreads out into the electorate, and those people are very adamantly in favor of seed and would not like to see it be taken away. And I think we're going to hear from some people who feel that way too here in just a minute. Governor Markell just mentioned the seed scholar recipients. Uh, Matt, if you're ready, we can have the students uh, introduce themselves, whether well, or not students now, they're graduates. Right? Uh, graduates. Uh, introduce themselves and then you can ask some questions. Why don't you start? I'm Victoria Varga. I am a Stanton campus graduate from Delaware Tech. I'm a nursing. I was a nursing major. I graduated in 2011, and I'm a full-time nurse at Christiana Healthcare System. Hello, my name is Omasanya O.J. Cole. I am a um, Terry Campus graduate, and I graduated in 2010. Um, my, current, my major was um, business administration, 
and I currently work for a um, credit card company. Good afternoon. My name is Joseph DeGrace. I uh, am on Owens campus, Sussex County, graduate of the architectural engineering program. Um, after that, I went on and got my bachelor's of architecture in at the New York Institute of Technology, and um, now I'm working in the field. So. Well, thanks for coming out and chatting with us. We appreciate it, and congratulations on your successes. Um, <clears throat> I would perhaps, um, if, if each of you can give us a little bit of information, how did you find out about the program? A lot of times when, when we talk to students or schools, one of the challenges, as is, is mentioned uh, by our panel, is letting, sometimes students don't know that this type of um, aid is available. So where did you hear, or how did you hear about the program? I guess, sorry. Um, I actually heard about the program in high school. I graduated in 2007. Um, Dell Tech actually came to my high school, um, introduced me to the program, the C Scholarship Program. So it was a college that I was thinking about. I did have other offers, um, but I necessarily chose Dell Tech because of the C Scholarship. Um, it paid for my tuition, which is a great help. Uh, received another scholarship through Dell Tech that paid for my books and fees. So I actually, I was fortunate enough to actually go to Dell Tech and graduate debt free, which was, which was a real benefit for me, just thinking about the future and taking on my degree to the next level. And I received a bachelor's degree in marketing a year later. I heard about Seed from my mom. My plan, I always, you know, I wanted to go, I wanted to get my bachelor's from the beginning. But financially and uh, with the loans that would be involved, I knew it wouldn't be a good investment. I knew Delaware Tech had an amazing nursing program, and she did a lot of research for me, so I can't take the credit, um, to what would be financially savvy and best in the long run. So I was very grateful and lucky to have received the SEED scholarship. And I think like you, my, my mother was actually a very big push. Um, we all want to go away <laughs> straight, to, straight to school um, and, and get things started. But she grounded me and said, you know, Delaware Tech, you can go there and get a degree in the same field that, that you're interested in um, and see if you like it. And, and I did. Um, and at the end, I graduated with a, de a great degree and, and continued on after that. So, and, and like they said, um, Financially, it made sense. Um, uh, although I didn't get books, I paid for books. Um, but I, again, I, I started uh, off at a five-year deg degree debt-free, um, which was incredible. So. And um, what um, early on when you started, because uh, a lot of students, particularly when they go to college, the first year is always the hardest. Um, what was it that kind of maybe kept you motivated to go get through that first year or maybe some challenges that, that you had? I think Delaware Tech acclimated me to the real world very well. Um, I, I left Delaware Tech um, right at the end of the field, um, but I don't think it took long for me to get acclimated and feel comfortable at Delaware Tech. Um, the courses, I think just the way that the courses and the, and the program set up, um, it, it, you, it just works. Um. Yeah, and actually just um, go off of what Joe said, um, there was, um, at the beginning when you actually start attending the college, you're placed in certain different ca classes. In these classes, you would actually uh, work towards to get to the main course. Um, you really just take a test and see exactly where you will be placed. So that, I felt, was very beneficial for me. Um, even if it might have took um, extra credits, it still made it easier for me. The process was a lot easier. I was a student that relied on the advisors all the time. I would always go into the advisor's office for help and guidance because I needed everything written down. I needed to know what I needed to do to be successful and everything was laid out very well and I, I knew what was expected of me to be a good student. It, everything was clear in the syllabus, everything was clear in the curriculum for ranking for nursing, so I really relied on my advisors to make it through the first year. Um, aside from the, um, the, uh, the aid money that, re that you received, 
what was it uh, about Dell Tech that you felt gave <coughs> you perhaps something extra that perhaps you couldn't get at a four-year institution? I personally um, still brag, even after going to a, a four-year school and receiving a, a five-year degree, um, I still brag that the things that I learned at Delaware Tech um, still to this day were not things that I learned when I went away to school. Um, Delaware Tech prepared me to literally go out into the field and work and be a professional. Um, and while there's benefits to going on to school, um, like I said, I, there's still to this day things that I couldn't learn away at school that I did at Delaware Tech. So, For me, it was uh, flexibility. Um, being able to take morning classes, um, midday classes, evening classes made it easier for me. Um, through Dell Tech, I was still working um, because I wanted to save up for that four-year degree college that I was going to attend. Um, so the flex flexibility really helped me out. And that was, that was really the best thing about it was the flexibility, actually. Two things stand out to me. The small class size, so the ability to get more one-on-one -on -one time and being able to ask questions and have your questions answered as opposed to a large uh, classroom at a university. And also, uh, I, made, I was very desirable as an employee to be hired uh, as a new graduate. Um, Dell Tech has a ver Delaware Tech has a very good reputation for nursing. I had all of the skills. I, they prepared me interview. Um, they prepared me to develop a resume. They ha I, was I was prepared. You guys are pretty awesome, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we're hearing really from, <laughs> from three students who probably would have gone to college anyway, just not as comfortably or done as well as they did. Uh, a lot of our students, and you know, you're seeing three, there's thousands and thousands and thousands, new ones every year, you know. And I can't go in a restaurant without one of them or two of them or three of them coming over to the table to say hello and tell me they were one of my seat students. It you is, you know, it brings tears to your eyes if you're sitting in my position and know how tough it was for me with three kids to get my degree. And you can't, you, you can't go into a, um, any kind of health care facility mm -hmm. in Delaware without being treated or seen by a Delaware Tech nurse or a Delaware Tech trained technician. Uh, and that's true in a, in a variety of fields. I mean, healthcare is just, you know, very, it's very clear. Um, you guys are really good, though. You make me proud. <laughs> um, when you have any interact, do you have any interactions currently with high school students or, or other uh, uh, younger students? And do you encourage them to consider the SEED program? I work with the younger kids. Um, I volunteer as a lacrosse coach and, and things like that. Um, so I don't know, I, I don't think they're quite ready. To, right, right now I'm coaching three, third and fourth graders. Um, but I, whenever I have the, the opportunity to, to talk to someone about the Seed Scholarship in Delaware Tech, I suggest it. Um, it was good for me and, and it's good for a lot of people, you know, as we see. Mm -hmm. My wife is a, a nursing graduate, um, so. And, and she stuck with it. She didn't want to, but I said, you're not going to get a better education, a better two-year degree than you are here at Delaware Tech. And, and she stuck with it, and, and now she, she, too, is working in the field and has a very rewarding career. So. And it's funny how things go around and come around. He's my great-grandson's coach. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have to admit, when we used to lacrosse, it perked my interest because my kids are into lacrosse right now. So I'm like, ah, oh, we could talk after it. <laughs> um, for me, I, in terms of what I do outside of, um, excuse me, where I currently work, I, um, I coach basketball. Um, with me coaching basketball, the kids that I work with is um, kindergarten. So, <laughs> um, and some of them actually didn't um, start kindergarten yet as well. So I think it might be a little bit too early just for me to, tell them about it yeah just <laughs> I want them to really just have fun and really just enjoy themselves um, so no talk yet but I'm definitely going to mention it to them now <laughs> uh, 
I, I don't really get to talk to students. I'm not involved as a coach. I would love to be. I don't have time. I'm a graduate student right now at University of Delaware working on my nurse practitioner. Um, but I also work full time. At work at Christiana, I do have some high school people who are interested. They're seniors. They're interested in getting into the healthcare field, and they're not sure if that's what they want to do. So they shadow me for a day sometimes, and I, I do talk to them about my success at Delaware Tech and about ha receiving the SEED scholarship, which they didn't hear about. Um, perhaps one of the final questions is, um, I'm sure you've heard about the, the president's proposal to, to offer two years of, of, of college, uh, community college for free to, for qualifying students. Uh, when you heard that announcement, what, what kind of went through your head? I mean, do you, do you, do you kind of think back to your experience and, and what, was, what was it like to hear him say that? I mean, I thought it was a great proposal. I think, um, why not um, give people a chance to earn a two-year degree and let them work in that field that they want to um, that they receive the degree in and see if they want to go any further with it. I think education is extremely important. Um, being able to do something different than you thought initially. So I'm all thumbs up for it. Me too. I think of it as a stepping stone for society and for students to stay out of trouble. If it's, I don't, I don't know exactly the criteria that it would be, but it would give them motivation for a future. And we are the future. Mm -hmm. I can't put it any better. <laughs> <laughs> um, trying to think, maybe one last one last question. Um, um, when people find out that you went to to to, to a community college initially, are they kind of surprised to, to find what your your kind of career track has led to? I would say 100% everyone asks me, did you go to the University of Delaware? No, I started at Delaware Tech, and I always <laughs> make sure I throw that in there because um, they, they do get surprised in healthcare. And uh, Del T Delaware Tech in Delaware has a very good reputation in my career path. So, um, But people who are not familiar with Delaware, so the other physicians I work with, they don't really expect the associate's degree nurses to be as knowledgeable as we are and it as um, expertise with our skills so they, they are shocked All right, and just to tack on what um, Victoria said it's um I say it's more of the perception uh, what people perceive um, community colleges to be um, it's honestly more than a two-year college it's a new life change it's a life experience um, so I do explain myself to people and let them know, you know, I did go get my associate's degree. Um, this is the reason why it was beneficial for me and it could be beneficial for you as well. On that note, um, you know, with that question, when I went away to school, although the school that I went to is not one of those 180 schools, um, I'm proud to say that even financially, um, they did accept more, well over two-thirds of my credits, um, which had a big impact on, on, on school um, and, and the workload that I had school-wise, but also financially. So, and, and like you said, that's recognition from the highest uh, level. Well, uh, is there anything else that perhaps you'd like to add that I didn't ask that you just you know feel it's important to to uh, say about either the seed program or your community college experience? I think it's a great thing, and and uh, you know we know why you're here, um, and if if you can make this model work around the world in the con this country, period, uh, it's a great great thing. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's good. <laughs> Perhaps a final word, maybe from from, from some of our uh, policy folks. Um, you know, hearing these kind of experiences uh, from from students, you know, because um, we can get the anecdotal information and we can have data, but when you actually hear how these programs uh, affect students in real life, what is, what kind of goes through your head? Mom I see everyone's kind of beaming right now, very proud of the program. I thought they were amazing. I thought they told the story. That's the story. I mean, I don't have anything to add. I mean, I think the, if you care about 
giving people an opportunity to succeed and you care about employers uh, having access to people with the right skills and we live in a world where there are actually a lot of jobs that are going begging because the employers can't find people with the right skills what better model is there and I thought the three of you were are as compelling as anybody we couldn't have written any of that that was great and I, I really I don't have anything to add I thought you know I thought they were that that's the story right there let me tell you one of the things that I used when members of the General Assembly said to me my god how much money is this going to cost us and I said to them well take your choice we're keeping them out of trouble. We're giving them an education. They're going to be taxpayers instead of using the prisons, the police, the counselors, and all the other things. And that's going to cost you more than that little bit of money to send them two years to Dell Tech. And you would be surprised how many members of the General Assembly who said, you sold me when you told me that. You know, you've got to think about it. In the very, very bottom rung of the ladder, you keep them out of trouble. You give them an education, they become taxpayers. You want to keep them in jail? You're going to pay for them three meals a day and a bed at night, plus all their medical expenses and all the other things that go along with it. I mean, I, I laid it on heavy when I was talking to members of the General Assembly. I don't think any of them knew anything to say to say that we're not going to do that. You know, Why are we not going to pass your bill? And the one thing I'd add to that, just to say, now I want you to remember, you're from out of state. Delaware is a very small state. So just look at these three young people and think about 700 of those each and every year, over 700, coming out and going into the community in some successful way. Isn't that wonderful? Fantastic. Sure awesome. is. Now, Matt, I've been trained to keep an eye on executive protection, which means they're going to they're going to ask the governor to leave. So before they uh, they ask him to do that, number one, uh, for the group in the room, just a couple of observations. We talk about this all the time. Leadership matters, right? Leadership matters. We've got a leader down there who's, I, I guess, tenacious is a, is a nice way to say it. We've, we've got a leader here who uh, never really knew how to fail. And we've got a leader in Governor Markell who makes very, very difficult choices to invest in education generally and this program specifically. So uh, we want to thank our leaders for honoring Delaware Tech and being here today. And uh, again, for the Delaware Tech folks in the room, uh, I want to thank the students because you don't know there are, thousands, there are about a thousand employees at Delaware Tech who work very, very hard every single day to support our students, to support um, folks like you. And you validated that work. It was just a huge uh, shot in the arm for all of us to listen to your stories. And, and we just really want to thank you for uh, sharing the story. Uh, thank you for being successful. And uh, thank you for giving us some validation so that we can go back and tell everybody that we work with um, how important it is to continue to work. Uh, and invest in you, people like you. Governor, I, I know they're getting nervous. Thank you so much. Congratulations.